yeah, I think it's about the time. So, uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Wen Wu. I'm in the product manager uh, in the Mingwei Europe. That's based in the Netherlands. And uh, today, uh, I'm going to present you uh, our new products uh, for two topics. As you can see in my background, that the first topic we will talk about is for the enclosed type power supply, chargers and inverters. And then second topic we will talk about is the high power solutions. And each of topic will be divided in the two parts. The first part is uh, the new product intro, introductions, and followed by the applications that will be presented by my colleague Dylan. Yeah. But then we will go for the first topic and then uh, the new product application, and then go for the second topic, new product and uh, applications, All right? It will take two hours, two hours in total, and then uh, we will, uh, I hope that from end of this webinar and uh, we can uh, share with you some info so that it will be, help you to design the project. Uh, for first, I would like to go for the enclosed type charger and inverter, but actually I'm only the presenter but not the responsible product manager. And the one who is responsible for this is the Frank, Frank Chen, who is uh, is with the base in the headquarters in Taiwan. And then uh, he's online. And today, uh, I think I would like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, introduce uh, him to you. And he would like to give us a short talk about the outlook of the, this uh, product under his, uh, for his product lines and also the strategy. How can we uh, promote our new product for the trending market and application? Hi, Frank Chen. The floor is yours. Hi. Good day, everyone. I am Frank. I am part of major at Taiwan headquarters. This is my pleasure to share with you the product outlook and the development strategy for CC niche product lines. Next page. As you can see on this page, Meanwhile has 12 product lines. I am in charge of CC niche product lines First one is Dingwell, battery charger, inverter, on both type adapter, and DC to DC converter. But today we are focused on introducing new generation inverter and charger. I am also responsible for six niche revision holes, includes D to D Dingwell inverter charger, PCB type medical, and adapter. There are four sections in each hold, includes product overview and product introduction, new products, and media center. Last one is solutions. So I think this is a great place to learn more meanwhile product lines and product solutions. So this is a very useful Next page. Let's move on to new products. First one is inverter low map. As you, as you can see on this page, meanwhile, TS series has been released for more than 10 years and are all products now. Therefore, meanwhile, is releasing new generation inverter NTS NTU series. And our EU team will show you for more details later. Next page. This page same as inverter roadmap. Our PV series also released, has been released for more than 10 years. So we were at development NPB, NPB series. So NPB, NPB series will replace PV series in the future. In addition, actually, Mingwell's Dingwell product line is already very complete, but we are developing some series for security market, such as new generation and new generation DUPS, and also 
DRC series up, is 10 up to 118 watts, as well as all-in-one security power DRS series. Okay, let's use one page to talk about this niche polarized and we focus uh, industries. It includes mobile power solution, renewable, and UPS DC backup applications. So if you have any demand, uh, you can suggest our new generation NTS NTU series, also NPB, NPB charger, as well as the real type DIS series. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And now I will back to our EU team. They will show you new products and applications for more details. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Frank. And then, yeah, the, I hope uh, that uh, with uh, Frank's explanations, that you know that uh, what uh, we can do for this, our sixth uh, product lines, and then uh, how can we further help you to design in the new projects and for the applications and new markets. And I know that Frank is working very hard but uh, he cannot work alone, so therefore we need you as a distributor to help us to promote the new products uh, and therefore to get the sales. That's very important. So first of all, I would like to, uh, before I start my new product introduction part, and then I would like to ask you to give me to do some commercial uh, things again on this slide. This is about the uh, app, the Meanwhile app. So why we are going to promote the Meanwhile app is because nowadays, yeah, uh, human beings, uh, we cannot live without the mobile devices. And then if you still use the, your mobile phone to check the, our website, go to the web browser and check our website, and sometimes it just take too long. Huh? So it's not so efficient. Therefore, the, an app is very important. As you can see on the slides, we can pro we providing this uh, iOS app and also Android app. And from this app, where you can find the new information uh, about our products and also company news and even some videos and marketing news and as, as, et cetera and so on. Uh, 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 yes, I would like to ask you, if you are not downloaded yet, please download it to your mobile phone today and then uh, 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 try to use it as much as possible because uh, uh, when you go to visit the customers in the near future after the COVID, uh, then uh, with your mobile phone, this is a great place where you can search information for Meanwell, from Meanwell. Of course, nothing is perfect. We will always, in, uh, uh, there's a room for improvement. So in case that you find this app has uh, some, something that you think should you be better, please let us know uh, via the uh, survey after the webinar today. Great. Then we can go to for the new product introductions. The first of all, I would like to talk about the enclosed type, uh, which has a model uh, name, HRP-N series. So before I go to the detailed slides for the HRP-N, uh, I would like to give you the overall roadmap of our enclosed type power supply with power factor corrections. As you can see on the slide, uh, you know, uh, if you are familiar with uh, our Meanwhile product, I guess you do is we already have the HRP series. And then uh, because the demand uh, from the customers for the inductive load, which they require for the peak power, uh, therefore we also release HRP N series that's ranging from 150 watt till 600 watt. And for our RSP series that you know is a very uh, high rung uh, product families ranging from the very 75 uh, watts all the way to 10,000 watts, and you can do that in parallels. And we also have a fully digital power supply design and also the, with the uh, power supply, which has the uh, high output voltage uh, for the CSP 3000. And uh, not forgetting about our UHP series, which is very important and popular model because it has no fan inside, so it can be uh, suitable for a lot of applications. And then I also talk about the, our PHP 3500 series. 
where we will really uh, we will show you uh, with high output voltage versions uh, in the later slides. The first is HRP uh, N series. So what's the key feature for this HRP N is it can provide 250% peak power up to five seconds. And then you reuse the uh, enclosure or casing from the HRP series. And you may imagine what can be useful for this peak power. And uh, now there's a uh, lots of applications like uh, uh, magnetic drive pumps, air compressors, coffee machine, building counters, machines, and lots of equipment or machines that with the motors inside because the motor is inductive low. So when you turn on the motor, you will uh, need this instant power, peak power, and then imagine that you just use a normal power supply and sometimes it just go through the production, either it's a hiccup or the uh, constant current and may not provide the optimal performance for the equipment. Therefore, HRP N series provide very good benefit is that you don't need to use two times the power supply anymore because if you, uh, for a power supply which has no peak power, then if you want to use with the motors, then normally you need the two times as power supply, which is very costly with this N series because it can provide peak power. So therefore you only have, need one power supply can do the job done. So this is a very nice features for that. Uh, the next new product I would like to show you is our PHP series, which has a high output voltage. We call it HV versions, yeah, with a high output voltage. Uh, as you know that we already have the AH, uh, PHP, PHP uh, 3500 series with a SELV output voltage. That means output voltage is less than 60 volts. Uh, 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 we know that for some applications, the voltage requirement is higher. Therefore, uh, we are going to uh, release this uh, high output voltage version. We're using the same enclosure as the low voltage version. So the high, there will be three models, 150 volt VDC, 230 VDC, and 380 VDCs. And you, uh, you can see it's similar. Uh, was a low voltage version that it can be conduction cool, that means without fan, uh, of course, with some ratings, and also you can use for the water cooling. And here you can use this our water cooling plate, HSH656, and also even you can use for fan in, in case your, your customer's end system has a fan, you can also use it. Uh, you can adjust the voltage and current uh, via the potential meter or via the uh, PBPC even for digital communication, PM bus as the standard unit. Of course, CAN bus is also possible as an optional. Uh, it has built-in DC OK, remote on off functions, complete with the uh, uh, EN uh, uh, ITE approvals with the EAC, CE here is also UL. Uh, I, I didn't know, but it's also UL for that, so that means it is cover most of the world, uh, the countries in the world. Uh, it design referred to this uh, 61558 and also household uh, apply, uh, approvals, 6055. It will be released soon. Uh, I guess uh, within two weeks, you will get the uh, uh, emails about uh, this new product release. And uh, here, this slide show you the, what's the high output voltage models we have in Linwell for the high power. Uh, first of this is a SCSP 3000 and then with a three, also three output volt, uh, version 120, 250 and 400. Uh, and then and now we are going to release the fanless model PHP. Uh, for PHP then is the 115 volt, 230 volt and 380 volt. But you can also use to cover the 380 volt for the 400 volt version, as you can have, yes, you can get from the CSP uh, things. Uh, the the sales our internal sales record shows that CSP 3000 is actually is quite uh, good. So that's one of the reasons that we release this PHP uh, 3500 high voltage version as well. And here is the, the way uh, of a high output voltage approach comparison tables. Uh, traditionally, if your system requires to have high output voltage, 
what you're going to do is you just buy the uh, power supply, several, and with the SELV output, and then you put them in series. Of course, uh, if you do that, that means that you have a very wi uh, complicated wiring uh, and because you're using multiple power supplies, therefore the cost is high. And, and because the more electronics, that means the overall reliability of the system is low, and then uh, there's some limitations. Therefore, the benefit of using a PHP or CSP is that you only need a single unit. And then the uh, uh, wiring and cost is all better than the traditional approach. The only issue here is on, uh, because of the output voltage is dangerous. So uh, in a system way, you have to make a protection in case you want to avoid the electrical shock uh, to human, for example. Yeah, that's the only things that needs to be considered. So what are the applications for PHP 3500s, high voltage series? Uh, you can use for an industrial laser in, uh, uh, application for engraving or the cutting. And then you can also use for uh, UV curing. Uh, and then also for the greenhouse applications where, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, the, they use a centralized power uh, voltage with a very high voltage over, over the cable because the, the uh, the, the loss will be lower uh, over the, the lines and then even you can use for charging and also benefit is like the, the, the wiring and the thickness of the wire can also be reduced compared to the low voltage but high current versions. Okay, so this is about the PHP uh, 3500s which will be released soon within two weeks. Uh, the next new product I would like, I would like to show you is HEP1000. Yeah, this is not the enclosed type power supply, but uh, is uh, more for the uh, power supply, which needs to use for the harsh environment, or the power supply that needs to have the IP67 uh, labels. As you are familiar with our uh, HEP, that uh, we already have the 100 watt to 600, and now we have these uh, 1000 watt versions, and then uh, there are three types of output models, 24 volt VDC, 48 VDC, and 100 volt VDCs. Rocket designed IP67 and with 10G vibration capabilities. It has the EM bus as the, sorry, it has the uh, 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 communication protocol possible for the CAN bus and PM bus, yeah, for, for selections. But the, the standard version is a blank one. You can also uh, uh, do the user curve adjustment and then it has the approvals for ITE and then design referred to household regulation as well. And it has been released. Uh, what we want to focus is now we also have a wiring version because uh, uh, what uh, before we released is terminal type, terminal type one, and then now uh, we also have the wiring one with this uh, approval ratings. And here you can see the, the tables give you the overview of the what uh, uh, function you have. I think the blank one is the the blank one is the standard one, the yellow one is the uh, optional, but this is standard optional, so the MOQ is less than uh, uh, the modified no, modified product. And for details, uh, please check with uh, your contact with the sales windows uh, to get the product. And here you can see overview what kind of functions that for each of the type of the models that can provide to you. So for example, like the we also uh, CPM. The CPM means that is uh, is uh, as a charging functions, and then it has the PM bus included. It's for CPM model. Yeah. Uh, HEP one thousand series that can be suitable for lots of applications. Uh, here we want to show you is the, for example like a five G base stations where uh, they need a power supply in can uh, uh, be used for the outdoor and also the, for the place where it has some uh, the water or is not dry. So it is support to take the HEP series and for some industrial application, uh, <coughs> also for charging applications because it's rocket design 
with the party and you know the party material also help for the heat dissipations. So therefore, HEP series also work, can work with very wide temperature range. So for some a charging application, uh, the, this harsh environment is required. Then HEP is suitable for that. Okay, then I am done with the, in, in the enclosed pipe uh, power supply part. Then I would like to move forward to the inverters. So for the inverters that we are going to release is the NTS series and NTU series. So here give you some uh, uh, the, the slides about the category of the inverter. Uh, what we have at the moment is the TN and TS series, as you know already, and then we are going, uh, we are launching the new NTS and NTU series. So what is NTS series is the uh, pure the inverters ranging from 250 watt all the way up to the 3,200 watt, and with the NTU is the uh, inverter plus UPS function, which we have a dedicated slides. Uh, from mine, or even uh, Dylan will talk more details into it. And then it has a, a sine wave output for the inverters, which is uh, um, uh, good for the all kinds of applications. Sorry. Okay, here the slides uh, uh, show you the selection table of this uh, new uh, series of inverters. And uh, I will not go to the, in the details. Uh, because this is a very uh, this table just give you quick references in case you want to suggest or recommend to your customers. So, what's the key features for the NTS and NTU? Uh, and then we have this uh, first the P with a, uh, the uh, model name model code with a P that means uh, it's a PCB type. So we have the 250 watt and 400 watt for the PCB type. But we also have a standard alone, just like a TS series uh, with a uh, wide uh, power range and also with the UPS function NTU. Okay. And uh, it has the 200% peak power capabilities. And then uh, with the output, uh, the uh, output waveform is less than 3%. And uh, it can, the output the voltage can be selectable via the dip switch. Yeah, and I think this way we have a dedicated slide for further discuss about this. And also you can choose output frequency between 50 hertz or 60 hertz, also the other deep switch. Uh, new version has been improved, especially on the no low power consumptions when it's in a power saving mode. And then uh, it is a fanless design uh, to the 300 watt with a building uh, temperature control for the fan speed, so therefore the, when the load, the, the connected load is low, and then uh, the fan will uh, rotate also low to uh, uh, reduce the acoustic noise generated by the fan. Uh, it has a lot of uh, for the protections, and in case uh, the, the yeah, abnormal issue has been triggered, it will automatic shut down. The, Inverter by itself. Why temperature range? So that makes a difference between the uh, uh, meanwhile inverter and other brand because our uh, inverter is designed based on uh, industrial grade. So the, our in inverter can uh, really suitable for very wide tem uh, temperature operating range, and also for all kinds of uh, uh, scenario and also the applications. Uh, you can also work with the, our remote controller IRC series that uh, you can work with this starting from the uh, NTS 750 and up to the uh, 3200 watt. And IRC that you can already, uh, if you have experience before that IRC is used to get with our TS uh, series for the uh, control functions. Uh, it also has a poor handle optional, as an optional accessory, which have uh, one dedicated slide for that. Uh, for NTU series, then we have building UPS functions and uh, we have all the approvals and suitable for the lead acid battery, but also for the lithium ion batteries. And then uh, we already launched some product and we will continue to launch the up to the high power, uh, high wattage version until the Q2 of next year. So of course, uh, in, at meanwhile, we are always seeking for the improvements. 
So yeah, one of the things you can see from the slides is that we uh, make the, our uh, environment uh, uh, better is because uh, this uh, NTS and NTU series that for the packaging that, uh, for example, like uh, uh, the, the, the things left to fix the inverters in the, into the box, carton box that uh, we are now changing from the EPE plastic into the paper versions. And also we don't use any ink on the, 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 the packaging itself compared to previous one. So that is more the environmental friendly. Uh, also, it's also for the user friendly because the, for the, this uh, new uh, pack, packaging, you can see we try to use more simple, uh, simple as much as possible. That means that with the, uh, uh, the, the, the pictures and then uh, the drawings that will help, help people uh, to understand immediately instead of reading uh, what's written on, the, on there, but to just use the symbol and then uh, most of people understand how does it work and uh, what kind of function it provides. Of course, uh, with the improvement of technologies, we will try to make the size smaller. As you can see on this slide, you can see everything is uh, smaller. Now mentioning the power is bigger because for example, that uh, if you will compare with the uh, NTS, sorry, the TS 200, and now the one is comparing is NTS 300. So that means the power is already better. Wow. wow. Yeah, uh, the uh, size has been reduced. Okay, so this is a uh, 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 win win situation. Uh, that means reduced size and also higher power. Okay, also the, the parameters or the specifications has been improved as well. So we have this uh, new one with the building type for NTS and also stand out alone with uh, more wattage for select. Output voltage is also better range, and then the normal power consumption is also smaller, and then uh, yeah, you can see everything is better. Yeah. So for people who want to change the output voltages, and then in, in for the current version for TS series, then you have to use the pin and to uh, for the to this button, and then uh, to change the output voltage. Uh, uh, via the, this uh, uh, circular rotations, yeah, which is not so uh, convenient because you don't see, you have to measure it in, to know if this, uh, the output voltage is that what you want. So the improvement that we have done is like uh, uh, we use a deep switch. So with deep switch, you can make the four types of the four types of the voltage for selection, and also with, to select the different uh, frequencies. I think uh, my, uh, my colleague Dylan have a dedicated slides for that as well. Uh, one of the important thing is the, uh, the plug, yeah, for the AC plug. For new generation, for the NTS that we have is the European plug for sure used in Europe and then also for the US mark with a US mark and also for Chinese uh, trans market that's with a Chinese plug. And it's also possible to have a universal one, uh, but however, uh, it is uh, in the, for the universal one that we cannot, uh, the, the component that supply the universal plug cannot get a CE. So therefore, uh, uh, because it is violated the rule, it's a national standard in the, uh, in the European countries, therefore the, for the, this universal plug, then it is not possible to have a CE. Yeah, but yet in case that uh, is not a is not a concern for you, then you can choose for the universal plug because you can you can have one plug, but uh, you can use al almost everywhere in the world. Uh, we also make this the, the optional the uh, accessory like a pull handles. So what does a pull handle is like uh, you after you can uh, uh, buy purchase this uh, uh, this uh, pull handle, which we will show uh, in the price list. In July um, from this year, and with this uh, poor handle accessories, and with a poor handle, then it's more convenient to carry the inverters. Yeah, it's uh, optional. That means that uh, you don't can have it uh, by the product itself, but you have to order as a separate uh, accessory from us. 
Uh, we also make our uh, better uh, information showing on the labels and also in the instruction manuals. And for NTU, is the it has the built-in UPS functions. So what is UPS? Yeah. So in case that when the AC mains is presented, yeah. So uh, uh, the inverter will bypass the AC mains and to the connected load. That means the energy is taken from the mains directly without using the energy from the battery that means that the battery can have a, a better or longer lifetimes yeah but in case that the ac mains is is uh, is breakdown is broken or is a blackout that uh the the, the 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 it will go to the inverter mode and therefore the energy from the battery coming to the inverter will be convert into the ac mains and to continue supply the load which is committed to the inverters and the transition is within the 10 milliseconds. So that means there's no, uh, there's no problem to pick up from the UPS and then back to the inverter mode. What are the applications for the inverters? You can, we can simply divide, there are two categories. The left-hand side, that's uh, the, the, where there is no AC mains. So we can uh, categorize there is a mobile AC power supplies. So for example, like the, in the caravan, uh, even for the hospital, medical cards, and uh, some uh, uh, camping vehicles, and some uh, equipment that's off grid. For example, like the industrial the, uh, vacuum cleaners, forklift, uh, even for use for the mobile power bank. In case that you use for uh, the AC mains is presented, then uh, you can use our NTU series, and then you can use a lot of the education like uh, uh, for for place or territory regions where the AC mains is not stable, so it's suitable for to use as NTU inverters, or even for backup or fire protections, even for some. Uh, equipment that's important, and then, then you uh, you make you make sure you make you want to make sure it's running twenty four hours, seven days per week, uh, and the whole years. So there are two applications, okay, uh, for use for these uh, new uh, inverters. And next one, I would like to move to the new chargers. That is a NPB and NPP series. Uh, again. Similar to the inverter that we want to show you the product categories, and then you can see our uh, chargers uh, is quite complete. And we now we are launching the new chargers uh, to replace the PB series. Yeah, so new chargers will range from the 120 watt all the way to 1700 watts. So uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, this is a raw map for this uh, PB and MPP series chargers, and the bet, uh, you can uh, give an overview to know that uh, this is a new version to replace the PB series. For this slide is a selection table. It's again, uh, this is uh, some slide. Uh, this uh, uh, table they give you very quick references, and then where you can use it uh, when you want to find the information, and in the this uh, quick comparison chart. Uh, we will launch this uh, NPB 120 to this uh, 360 in July, summer this year. And then the higher models for higher power models is going to be expected in the uh, Q4 of this year. There are new features for this uh, uh, NPB 120, 240, and 360s. Uh, for it is a universal input, small size without fan, and then you can select the two or three stage charging curve via the dip switch, and then you can uh, adjust the output current or charge uh, voltage via the potential meters on the panel of the unit. Uh, less than uh, 0.15 watts for normal power consumption. Uh, 
and also provide uh, all kinds of protections in case it's abnormal. And again, it's uh, designed with an uh, industrial grade, therefore it can uh, run very wide temperature range from minus 30 all the way to 70 degrees. Suitable for the lead acid battery, but also for the lithium iron batteries. It has a dual certifications, ITE, and also household approvals. Three types of the water multiple the output connectors, terminal block one, as you can see on the slides, and also with a wiring where we have this four pin XLR, normally I call these microphone head connectors, and also for Anderson's. So we will re uh, uh, release in July uh, this year. So again, the new series is better in terms of uh, size. You can see this a uh, quick uh, comparison that uh, NPB 360 is already smaller, 45% smaller than our PB series. So uh, with the new generation NPB, we, here we would like to show you a comparison tables. Uh, what I want to point out is like the, the voltage range is much wider than the current, uh, current products. And then uh, you can uh, also select the uh, two or three stages, depends on the, the needs via the deep switch, and then you can uh, adjust the output current and voltages. Yeah. So similar concept as our inverter, which I introduced before, is also user-friendly uh, as an improvement for the, this MPB. For example, like the deep switch for the charging curve selections and output voltages, uh, via the, the potential meters <coughs> or VR and you can also adjust the charging current as well. In the previous versions, a PV uh, where you can only change the voltages but not the current charging current. So this is an improvement for that. Also it has the multiple connectors uh, available. You can see the microphone head, Anderson head, also terminal block. They are all standard uh, models. That means no MLQ. So you can, uh, depends on uh, your application requirement, so you can select the, the suitable connectors for that. Uh, yeah, it's suitable for the all kinds of batteries. And then uh, 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 in the previous uh, version, PB series, and then normally we suggest only for the lead acid battery but for the new NPB, uh, not only for lead acid, but also lithium iron batteries as well. The application, uh, you can see, it can be used for electrical mobilities, like all the golf cars, e-bikes, and you can also use for the, some industrial handheld uh, tools, like a drillers or blenders, or even the lawnmowers, and some handling equipment, and also for industrial application, for cleave, crane, drone, and so for some, uh, uh, some charging stations, yeah, either use it for hospital or if using for the, some uh, commercial uh, place, like a uh, public place, uh, like uh, airports. Okay, here I would like to do some uh, summary, summary of the, these uh, three product lines that we introduced today. Now the first one is the new inverters that you can use, uh, use for uh, all kinds of the, uh, uh, markets like a railway, medical, and the building automation and the green energies. Yeah, and then uh, what is the the, 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 the application? It can be the, for the camping cars, ambulance, uh, uh, fire protection uh, uh, equipment. For chargers that we introduced about the MPB, uh, many is for MP, MPB. Yeah, we don't talk about more on the MPB because. May, you may have a question, what's the difference between the NPB and NPP is like, NPB is, has a more intelligent function, where the NPP uh, is, uh, can, is uh, like for the simple charger at war, even, even you can use for the power supply. So it's, um, it's, I, I would say it's a simplified version of the chargers, smart chargers. So NPP is more intelligent and NPP is simplified versions, okay? But since we are going to launch the NPB soon in July, and then uh, later uh, will be NPB. 
So then I, I don't talk more too, uh, too much in de into the details, but you will get more information uh, in the second half of the, of the new product introduction, introduction of this year. So you can use for the market, for the electrical vehicle, and the energy storage, and then for the applications is uh, for e-bikes, uh, scooters, and some uh, electrical uh, uh, lawnmowers, some for industrial applications. The third one is enclosed type, where we talk about our HRP dash N and also PHP. Also, we also uh, we mentioned about the HEP one thousand wiring versions, and that you can suitable for all kinds of industrial, household laser, and uh, even uh, greenhouse agriculture uh, applications. And yeah, you can see the equipment that is suitable for that. Uh, okay, so this part uh, I already finished for the new product introduction. And now I would like to invite my colleague Dylan to give the application for the enclosed and charger inverters. Okay, Dylan. Okay, so first, thanks for Wen's introduction in the first part. And in the next 15 to 20 minutes, uh, I will be the speaker. So we will start from the first uh, uh, inverter product line. Uh, I will introduce more information of the new features of NTS or NTU series. So I will divide it into two parts, the features and also the applications. So first, let's have a look at the general configuration when using the inverter. From the left side, you can see we have the battery which is connected to the DC input to the inverter as the input power supply. And we connect the application load at the AC output. And especially if you choose the NTU series, you will have one more AC bypass AC input in that. So therefore you can connect the AC means from powered from the power grid. So in the following slides, uh, I will also uh, explain how does the AC bypass mode work for the NTU series. To make the application setting easier, we have the new DIP switch. So you can find this DIP switch side, uh, at the side of the inverter. So there are four DIP switch positions. You can use the first three DIP, uh, uh, DIP, three, uh, DIP uh, switch for the voltage and frequency settings according to the regions. So you can use the switch four to set if you want to change the inverter for the saving mode. So by default, this is disabled that is on the off position. So how does the saving mode work? So if you put the DIP position for the SW4 to the on position, you set the unit in the saving mode. So once your application is turned off, so under this mode, the units will, will continuously detect the output load condition. And once the load is less than 10 volts, the unit will switch from the inverter mode to saving mode. So at this moment, there will be no continuous out AC output. And in the saving mode, the inverter will send a pulse in every three seconds to detect the load condition. So by the calculation of the load by the internal microprocessor, so once the load is connected again, the inverter will detect and switch from the saving mode to the inverter mode again to provide the output power. Of course, by default, you can also use the inverter in the non saving mode. So at this moment, you will have the continuous output, whatever you connect your load or not. So due to the benefit of the saving node, as you can see, based on the data of the NTS 750, the node power consumption in the saving node is much lower than the non-saving mode. For example, for NTS 750, it's only less than 1.5 volts. So due to the benefits of the low standby voltage, you can easily simply use it for the uh, recreational workloads. Once you don't need, you can turn off all the electrical appliances in the truck and 
which could increase the standby time from the battery bank and also the life, life cycle of the battery. So let's continue for the NTU features. As we mentioned in the first slides of the general configuration, we, we mentioned that for NTU series, it provides you the bypass features. So the bypass features is very suitable for the application of the UPS. So how does it work? Let's have a look step by step. So let's assume we have the system as the left picture show. We have the battery connected at the input of the inverter. We connect the application load at the output AC. We connect the AC from the power grid. So if you need a charger for the charge of the battery. So in the first time internal, you can see there is the power from the power grid. So at this moment, the water will detect the AC power from, uh, from the AC in and all the power for the application load comes from the power grid. So once there is an interruption from the power grid, let's see the power stops. The, so the inverter will detect and all the power for the application will come from the battery. So next step, once the power is recovered again from the power grid, then the inverter will detect again and change the mode from the inverter mode for the, to the bypass mode. So at this moment, the battery stop to power, to stop to supply the power for the application load, but the power was directly from the power grid. So at the moment, you can also use a charger to charge the batteries. So once the power stops again from the power grid, so the inverter will detect again, and now the battery provides all the power for the application load until the battery voltage becomes low enough that the inverter will detect and shut down to prevent the fully discharge of the battery. So for UPS function, as we mentioned, Currently, only NTU series has this UPS function. So NTS series uh, doesn't have the function. So if you need to select an inverter for the UPS application, please select NTU series. So U means UPS simply. So we also provide the IRC model to match the application of the NTU and NTS series. So what is IRC? So IRC is our uh, monitoring and control unit, which could decode the RS232 signals received from the inverter, and then shows all the information, like uh, for example, the status information of the inverter. And you can also use the IRC model to have the remote on-off control for the inverters. So currently we have three different models. So please uh, double check uh, our spec to choose the suitable version of IRC. So the inverter provides different uh, protections. So apart, uh, apart from the OVP protection, as we mentioned, we also have the UVP protection to protect the charger fully discharged. So under these two protections, the unit will automatically shut down immediately. So if you connect your battery to the inverter, and uh, even at no load, you cannot have the output condition uh, output. So please uh, double check your battery voltage is within our working voltage range. We have the DC plastic protection. So before connection of your battery, please take care of the plenty of the battery. So we also have the second light protection for you that we have the internal fuse in the inverter. So once the plenty is reversed, the internal fuse will be open. So to prevent the further damage of the unit, but then you need to send the unit back 
for repair. So after replacing the internal fuels, so the unit will work normally again. So it has the overload protection. So for some hint, so how long is it? So the unit can have the 200% uh, peak power for about 30 cycles. So for about 150% peak load, it can last about 10 seconds. For about 110% load, it can last about three minutes. So apart from the OTP protection, it also have the short circuit protection. So differently from the overload protection, for the short circuit protection, it will immediately detect and automatically shut down. So this, so, uh, this is used to prevent the further damage of the unit or your applications. So if you find the unit have the output and then without any output immediately, so please double check if the application load is shorted or there is a peak power for the application load. That means, uh, for example, the, the start in rush current is too long and too high. So in this case, please uh, double check uh, uh, with our TS team and uh, you might also consider to use a inverter with a higher power, higher rated power version. So in the, pre, in the previous slide, I have introduced the application for NTU that due to the benefit of the CV mode setting, you can use it for the RV auto. So due to the second benefit of the bypass mode, you can also have the, you can also you, use the NTU inverter because you can connect the AC means once the auto is parked with the AC supply available. And uh, you, uh, it's also possible uh, to connect the AC generator to the, uh, to the bypass in, in, inlet to save the energy from the battery bank. So due to the benefit of the bypass mode, you could simply choose the NTU series for the backup for security system. So the switch from, so once the power stops from the power grid, the energy will start, uh, so the inverter will detect and start to absorb the energy from the battery. So the switching time from, from, from the standards is within 10 milliseconds. So this is to provide the uninterruptible output for your application load. So this is all the information for the inverter. So next, let's focus on the charger. So for the charger, I will mainly, uh, I would like to introduce some new features of MPB series. And I will also introduce this MPB family in, ter in terms of the functions and also the applications. So <clears throat> before choosing a charger, you need to know the characteristic of the battery. So this table shows you the, the most features for the common use batteries. And you can see for different batteries, it might have different cell voltage, different charging current, and even the different charging standards. So the cell voltage, it, the cell voltage is also the battery voltage when uh, it's connected in the pack. So MPB series can provide you those features. So let's have a look step by step. So first you need to know what kind of charging stage you need for your battery. So you can simply select the charging stage by the deep switch, which is located at the side of the charger. So the last picture is just give you some, some uh, typical information for the two stage and the three stage charging curve. So let's uh, ignore this information at this moment. So apart from the adjustment for the charging stage, you can simply use the potential meters to adjust the voltage and the current. So the voltage is covering from the lead eight battery and also the lithium ion batteries. So if you are, so the voltage is the both voltage that you need for the battery. 
For example, if you are charging a three-stage battery, that you can set the voltage by the potential meter to set up the both voltage of the battery. So at this moment, the floating voltage will also adjust it according to the both voltage that you set in proportionally. So the so you can also use the second potential meter to adjust the charging current. So if you have the small size battery with lower capacity, you can decrease the current. So please notice that once you increase the charging voltage, please make sure that the total using power is within the rated power of the MPV. So due to the benefit of the wide range of the charging voltage and charging current, MPB series is suitable for most common use char charging operations. So from the medium, uh, from the small size to the medium size of uh, size of the battery, for example, from 10 ampere hours capacity to the hundreds of the, the ampere, cap, uh, ampere hour capacity battery. So uh, for example, the golf cart and uh, the low mover. So uh, in the first part, uh, this is all the information that I want to share with you. And uh, uh, I will invite when again to start the, in, the introduction of the second part, which is uh, high power solutions. So let's welcome Wen. Great, thanks Dylan. And then uh, we move, now we can move to the second topic of today, that is the high power solutions. Uh, yes, I, uh, I think I forgot to mention that in case you have any questions and then you can write in the text board and then uh, we will try to answer uh, them together by the end of, uh, of the today uh, for the webinar today. Uh, but uh, since uh, in the text board there are lots of uh, questions, which is very good, then we know that uh, uh, you uh, we appreciate that you are paying attention on this. Uh, okay, before I go to the new pro product introductions, and then uh, 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 similar to the uh, in the previous to topic that. Uh, this uh, main responsible product managers is not me, but the Paul Xu, who is also in the uh, Minwell headquarters in Taiwan, and uh, he's also online. And uh, uh, again, I would like to take this opportunity uh, uh, to for him to give you a few minutes to talk about what's the outlook and what's the strategies and to, uh, for the new products and then for the emerging markets and application, which can be helpful for the promotions. Okay, uh, Paul, the floor is yours. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, uh, good day, Minwell's uh, distribution partners. Yeah, I am Paul Xu, I'm a product manager with Minwell headquarters. And before uh, when go deep dive into the product introduction of uh, high power solutions. Let me share with you some information of uh, Minwell's high power product. Next place, please. Okay, so I'm in charge of uh, three product lines among Blue Ocean product lines. They are a uh, rec power supply, modular power supply, and also system power supply. And here I would like to elaborate more on system power supply. Uh, Minwell uh, integrated digital 3.2 kilowatt power supply and charger uh, with uh, power shelf plus second generation controller CMU2 to uh, create system power solutions. And maybe you already noticed that in uh, 30th uh, April, excuse me, 30th uh, March, we released tech note in, uh, regarding to system power solution is the application of uh, system power solutions in uh, a particle uh, accelerator in Taiwan. Okay, and also we uh, released, we uploaded the uh, EDM of uh, system power solutions uh, by the end of uh, April. Yeah, these are good tools for distributors to, uh, to share with your uh, customers, okay. Uh, next slide, please. And here on the uh, bottom left corner, you can see the uh, configuration system power hole. This 
online exposition, uh, exposition hall belongs to my plot lines. And please take time to take a quick look at it. And maybe you will find the uh, uh, materials of uh, configurable power and system power are useful to you or to your customer. OK, uh, next slide, please. And here, uh, let's take a look at the roadmap of high power solutions. So uh, on the bottom half, it's a three-phase, three, wire, three four-wire product segment. And the upper half is the three-phase, uh, three-wire digital product segment. So let's take a look at the bottom, the bottom of, uh, of the slide. It's Minwell's existing uh, products, RST, 5 kilowatt and 10 kilowatt. And based on both series, we upgraded the, uh, th this series to from 5 kilowatt to 7.5 kilowatt and from 10 kilowatt to 15 kilowatt and in the same form factors. Okay. And for uh, RST 7.5 kilowatt series, we offer uh, models with uh, force air cooling and also water cooling solutions. And the uh, output voltage of uh, 7.5 kilowatt and 15 kilowatts will be uh, 115 volt, 230 volt, and also 380 volt. Okay, and let's move up a little bit to uh, three-phase, three-wire uh, digital product segment. Here we see we call it uh, SHP 10 kilowatt series. And it's in the same form factor as uh, RST 7.5 kilowatt series. Also with uh, cooling methods in force air cooling and also water cooling. And also we prepare one new cold plates for customers to use. Okay, and on the very top of the slide, it's uh, in planning our tw 20 kilowatt models and 30 kilowatt models. Okay, and for the uh, scheduled uh, product launch on SHP 10 kilowatt series, it will be around uh, early to mid January to, to, uh, 2022. And for RST 7.5 kilowatt and 15 kilowatt series, the uh, scheduled product launch will be around uh, mid to end of uh, April 2022. Okay, that's the roadmap of high power solutions. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And here is the uh, product strategy of Minwell's high power products. Uh, first, on the uh, uh, battery manufacturer applications, uh, such as uh, formation and grading systems for battery cell manufacturer. And also with uh, battery pack testing equipment, we recommend by direction AC to DC, DC to DC converter, BIC 2200. And for the energy recycling applications such as household EV charging stations with uh, vehicle to grid features, which means that uh, the power in EV's battery can be feed into the grid to enable uh, peak load shavings and also for the application on robotics, for example, like a robot arms, especially on the kinetic power recovery, we also recommend uh, by direction AC to DC and DC to DC converter, BIC 2200. And also on the uh, high power consumption applications, especially on uh, laser processing equipment, uh, UV curing for industrial printing, grow lights, uh, DC house, which are uh, introduced by uh, Rex last week, we recommend using uh, RST 7.5 kilowatt and 15 kilowatt series and also SHB 10 kilowatt series. Okay, that's pretty much my uh, short talk today. And when please uh, continue product presentations. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's very nice uh, and clear explanation about uh, what we are going to do with the pipe power solutions. As you know that the quantity required for this high power is not like a cross type or the, some uh, you know, LED driver which is very high quantity, but this uh, we are focusing more uh, small quantity but the higher margins and, and for niche markets. And then uh, what the milestone as uh, Paul has mentioned is like we 
uh, our power supply solutions, high power can be not only uh, can be also be used for uh, scientific research, uh, just like uh, uh, this uh, the tech note in the March that you see that uh, our power solution used for the particle accelerations. So which is uh, very nice because you know that uh, meanwhile high power solution is quite reliable and uh, suitable for for not only for industrial application but also for scientific research. Okay, then uh, I will continue with the uh, new product introduction for uh, for the this uh, high power solution, and then follow my colleague Dylan again. We'll show you some application in de into details. The first product is about a uh, modular power supplies, NMP one K two and six hundred fifty. Uh, I think NMP one K two and six hundred fifty is not the uh, new, but what's uh, new here is the modules. Then we are releasing, we released uh, this new module NMD-240 uh, with a dual output. Yeah? So with, uh, where the, the range is from 3 to 30 volts, and then with uh, each is the 150 watts max mark of the of per output, but in total combined uh, is up to the 240 watts. Okay, so yeah. Uh, for the NMP series, you know that it has uh, both ITE and uh, medical approvals, dual safeties. And uh, here I would like to uh, emphasize for the uh, module power NMP series and this very small design. And then uh, uh, both uh, this uh, front end or the enclosure and the DC to DC module can be uh, sold separately because they are the certified uh, individually. And then, uh, uh, therefore, the customer can just buy and then install uh, assembly. Need to make the complete power supply system by, or the unit by themselves. Dual safety, as I mentioned, for medical and industrial, which cover very wide uh, applications, and it has the programmable voltage and programmable current functions. And then uh, it also has a semi F47 approvals. That is suitable for semiconductor equipment. Uh, it has a very wide range and all the intelligent control functions as well. And these slides that we want to focus is the new uh, DC to DC module used for the NMP module power is N NMD-240. Dual isolated output channels, so they are the isolated, but and then they are dual. Yeah? So they don't share a common ground, which is very nice for some applications. Independent protections on each of the channel. Uh, output voltage can be adjustable via the separate uh, uh, potential meters. Two sets of the remote control signals. Two times MOPP for medical equipment or uh, for the, uh, medical the, uh, uh, certifications, MOPP means of the patient protections. For output connectors, has a bicolor, I think is the orange and gray uh, to indicate the priority and the output body so that the uh, uh, user may, uh, will not uh, make a mistake to force connection easily, yeah? Because there's an orange for the channel one and then gray for the channel two. So one of the, the, the case study we'd like to share you is the how does our customer use our module powers? Uh, one of the emerging markets or application is energy storage systems. As you can see on the slides, is like uh, uh, here is a containers. Inside is a lot of uh, battery pack, and then in uh, of course some of them are using our charger to charge the battery. But I will not go to details. But uh, they also use our module power NMP into the, this container where it is used for the battery management system controllers. Yeah? So you can see it's located here. Yeah. So this is a, a wonderful a successful story that we have uh, made in uh, North America. Another, another case study is for the module power is for medical uh, uh, surgery, surgery room, operation room where it's used to power the monitor and some the computer peripheral devices. Yeah? Uh, because you know they are, the, the, the whole system is installed in the operation room. Therefore, the medical grade is uh, uh, required. So you cannot just take the normal the, 
the computer AT, 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 ATX power supply to use that? No, you cannot. So you need to have a medical grade and then with a reliable power unit and our MMP is very suitable for this application. So this is a, a set, one of the success for the uh, project we have done in Belgium. Okay, so the next uh, product we'd like to introduce you is the UMP-400. It's also the modular power supply and then uh, uh, but in a smaller design. Uh, it is a fanless design and then uh, with an enclosed, enclosed uh, housing and uh, you don't need to uh, give the conventional cooling. Uh, then it can provide a full power and 400 watt. And uh, it has it worked together with the NID module, which is a D2D module, and therefore the total create the multiple output uh, to achieve these uh, module powers. Yeah. So uh, UMP400 and an NID D2D module can be uh, ordered separately. So that means that in case your assist, uh, system only need an NID D2D modules, so you don't have to buy uh, you can just order for us separately and then uh, in case you need a UMP uh, 400 and with a multiple output then you just order the UMP. The safety approval is based on the ITE and then is designed to refer to the medical approvals and they're used for the in industrial and medical application so therefore very wide uh, temperature operating range up to the 70 degree. So uh, where can you use for UMP? You can use uh, uh, from a lot of uh, uh, IT equipment where nowadays is like a self uh, checkout uh, uh, system or the devices like a classic. Uh, as you can see uh, on the slide, that is a lot of the, this, uh, the, the equipment with a screen, touch screens, and the customer can do the either self check or the use uh, for the uh, uh, pumping the gas or the even charging uh, stations. Okay, so then I would like to move to the BIC 2200s, which uh, is uh, meanwhile first bi-directional power supplies. So here's the key features of the BIC 2200s, and then is a bi-directional. Uh, here I would like to explain what's a bi-directional. Normally uh, you are familiar with the AC to DC power supplies. Yeah, so this is a one direction, and this uh, unit can also provide not only the AC to DC uh, converter, but also like a grid tight converters. Yeah, that means it will change from the DC and back to the AC. So this uh, AC to DC converter and the grid tight converter, two in, uh, two in one the devices that makes the, this uh, BIC 2200s. So that's why we call it bi-directional power supplies. Uh, it's many design for the battery the, uh, cell testing uh, industry, like a formation and grading pr uh, process for battery cell, or even for the battery pack, analysis, checking, and uh, also manufacturing uh, test systems, uh, even for the energy recycling uh, systems. It's a, a, a small design compared to the competitors, and then it's a fully digital uh, control. So it has the, the stand, there are two models. One is the standard versions and without a con uh, communication uh, protocol. And then the second model is uh, with the CAN bus communications protocols. And you can make the in parallel up to the five units. So it reach the total power to 11 kilowatts and the very wide output the voltage range in the constant power mode. Uh, THD is less than 5% when uh, they are the, in, working in the inverter mode. Uh, then the, is a user, user the uh, user the selectable to, uh, to work as the power supply or inverters. So that we call the charge and the discharge mode. But it's only achievable by, by the other optional model, which is the CANVAS versions. And later on, uh, my colleagues uh, Dylan has a dedicated slide to, for, uh, to, uh, to share with you in details. Very fast transition response time, less than one milliseconds, and then has, a provide, uh, has a all kinds of the all round protection mechanisms, uh, especially because this is a grid tight inverters, therefore, we all also have the protection is an anti island uh, protection mechanisms. It's a design 
uh, based on the IT approvals and then a design referred to the uh, 62477. So 62477 for people who don't know uh, is, is a safety for power electronics converter systems and it's mainly used for the battery test and analysis uh, uh, equipment, the standard is for that. So we will release that in June 2021, that means that to uh, one month from now. So there are four models uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the output voltage, 12 volts VDC, 24 volt VDC, 48 and 96. And you can see it uh, uh, with a uh, uh, forward direction, that means the normal the A, A to D converters. Then at the full load is, this is the, the current that we can supply with the very high efficiencies. And then when it work as uh, the inverters, and then uh, due to, uh, due to the, the, this uh, uh, checking of the output voltages yeah, on the, from the mains. So therefore, the uh, efficiency will be lower, but to in order to maintain the same efficiency, then we have to reduce the full load to uh, less than the, the normal A to D converters, where that's, you can see the difference between, for example, like 12 volt VTC version, then for the, a to D converter is 180 amperes, but when you work as an inverter mode, then it is reduced to 150. Yeah, it's because the back to from the DC to AC, then the mechanism is more complicated. So in order to maintain the same efficiency, then we have to reduce it a little bit. The upper current. So it has a, a, a for for the 180 up to the six uh, for European uh, uh, the voltage range. So 180 up to the 264. Five years warranty because uh, we use the Japanese uh, electrical leak capacitors inside and will provide all kinds of uh, protections. Yeah. So uh, how can you use this? In the left hand side, uh, sorry, in the right hand side that uh, it gives you the, some uh, black background to show the, how can you use to, to test the uh, battery, lithium batteries uh, equipment. Yeah. So you can see that, uh, yeah, this is the battery uh, cell for the testing, but uh, you know uh, that the battery cells is only uh, yeah, 3.7 volts, and then we do a charging 4.2 volts, and then you know that the uh, smallest uh, voltage in the bottom about BIC is 12 volt version, therefore you need additional DC to DC converters for that to achieve this uh, uh, to, to down converter. From 12 volt to the 4.2 uh, volt, and then uh, our BIC is a place in this position where, when this is uh, when you will provide energy to charge your battery, and when the battery is testing is uh, discharging, and then uh, the, the energy will get back to the mains grids. Yeah, so that means that the, we call it energy recycling, and then because BIC has a uh, the uh, CAN bus protocol, therefore it can be controlled via the CMU2 which is, uh, is our the control unit for the high power solution. By the way, that for CMU2, that uh, we, we expect to finish our trial run by the end of the October this year, okay? For CMU2, then you could use to uh, do some uh, control remotely via web server or the uh, internet and uh, a lot of things, yeah? So, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, for the, optional model that support the CAN bus. And then uh, you can use the CAN bus to do like a remote controlling, uh, sending the, the, the command via the CAN bus line. So you can uh, also enable or disable the charge or discharge mode manually. Yeah, you can set the, 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 the point where you can start, uh, uh, there's the, 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 the a criteria or conditions where uh, the BIC should do the charging of the load or discharging, that means the energy recycling back to the grids. Okay, I think uh, Dida has uh, one uh, dedicated slides to talk the, to uh, explain uh, in the, into a detail. So I will not go further with that. Uh, current sharing, so the five units maximum uh, in parallel to achieve the total 11, uh, 11 kilowatts uh, in case is uh, needed for the end system. So uh, this uh, the curve you can find the detailed connections in the data sheet of the BIC. Uh, yeah, 
because the, this is a grid tight inverter inside the BIC type, uh, then uh, uh, there are some parameters that is needed, required for the, the standards, and then uh, the standard achieve, acquire, uh, require the THD current less than 5%, then uh, our EIC is compliance to that. Also the, for the DC current less than 5%, yeah, that is uh, for, for the uh, mapping to the AC main grid. So it should be the DC component should be less than 5.5%. And you can see that in case uh, the DC, there was the DC component. So for the, this is the blue color is the AC main. And then the, the, with this uh, a pink color that represent the DC component. So it should be within 0.5%. Yeah. So we our BIC uh, product compliance to that. Also, as I mentioned, uh, because it's a grid tie inverter, so in case that the AC mains is down, and then uh, it will uh, make it will enter the I, uh, anti island uh, effect, and then uh, in case to then we have to shut down the BIC because in uh, in in that case to avoid the further damage of the equipment or further to avoid the electrical shock uh, of the users in touch. So according to the IEC 62116, then the grid tie inverter uh, is supposed to be shut up within two seconds. And then our BIC complies to the standards. Okay, so what's the allocations that is suitable for BIC 2200? Uh, the primary design purpose is for the battery pack or cells uh, systems. Yeah, and then uh, uh, you can also use for the uh, for a robot in case that ro when the robot is the, the, the motor or in line, the robot is uh, stopping, normally it has done uh, returning energy. And with when this is used for the BIC 2200, then it's very nice. So then, uh, if, uh, sometimes if you don't release in, in, a, in a normal way, what people is doing, they have a releasing resistors, yeah. To release this uh, this extra uh, or the returning power by the kinetic uh, motor movement, uh, stop moving, and then use a, a resistor to release this energy, which is not very nice. So uh, it, so then we use uh, use the BIC. Then uh, you the efficient overall efficiency of the system is higher because there's no uh, releasing the resistor, but all the energy. Uh, generated by the, the, the motor braking will back to the AC mains. Also, you can use for the big load, uh, big load shaving. Uh, as I mentioned, I really talk to agree. I think it's uh, a little bit too, 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 too wide range. I would say uh, if you have this uh, uh, battery at home, and then normally the, uh, you, you imagine that you have solar panels that generate electricity, and then uh, you can use this one you can use this one to back to to the to the to the grid and during the daytime and when doing the in, in evening and when you go home and then uh, you the BIC twenty two hundred will start to work because now is uh, because in the evening you can you normally consume more energies. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, above is uh, what I present for new product inter introduction for the high power. And now I would like to again give the floor uh, to Dylan, who will talk more details about application for high power solutions. Okay. Okay. So welcome back to the technical part. So for the technical section of the high power solutions, I will take the most time to introduce the BIC Tunnel 200 unit because it's quite complex. So let's slowly have a look at the details of the BIC unit. So let's have a look at the outline. So the BIC unit is a bi-directional power supply. As the name indicated, the unit could work in either forward direction or reverse direction. Optionally, we also provide an optional CAN bus model so in the campus model, there are two control modes. So when introducing the campus model, we will have a look at these two control modes. So during the application design, 
So we have some notes for the occasions. So you will see some notice. So because this unit has quite complex operating, we would like to share with you a demonstration video of the test. So before the video, we will take some time. I will explain the setup in the demonstration video and also the test steps. So to make you more understandable for the demonstration video. Okay, so let's start with a bidirectional conversion part. So, because the unit is complex, that let's make a consensus of the words that I use in this presentation. So, uh, I will use the set voltage for the output voltage of a BIC unit. So, the set voltage means the output voltage of the DC of the BIC unit. So to make the explanation more clear, so in this application, I will mainly use the battery as, as, uh, as an example to explain the performance of the BIC unit. So I, so I will simply use the battery voltage. Uh, you can think it as a output load voltage or the test increment voltage, but in this position, I will use a battery voltage. So set voltage for BIC output voltage and battery voltage stands for the output load voltage. So it has two direction, the forward direction or the reverse direction. So as the picture shows, in the forward direction, the energy is converged from AC to DC. So at this moment, the AC supplies the power to the input of the BIC unit and transfer to the DC for the charging operation of the battery. So it could be also work as a discharger. At this moment, it's like a, a grid tie inverter. The energy is transferred from the DC side to the AC side. So at this moment, the battery is discharged and the energy is transferred to the AC side for energy re recycling. So there are two <coughs> operating modes depending on which model we are using. So we have two models, the standard model and the optional CANBUS model. So the bi-direction auto-detect mode is for the standard model. So the programming bi-direction battery mode we use in this partition is for the optional canvas motion. So the, for the standard model, the BIC unit, it simply detects the battery voltage and depending on the battery voltage, it will automatically switch the direction. In the next slides, I will give you the example of the operating condition. So after the introduction of the, uh, the standard model, we will also take some time to have a look what is the operating for the optional CAN bus version. So uh, definitely for the CAN bus model, the direction of the working performance is controlled by the user. So let's start for the standard model operation. So for the standard model, the set voltage by default is a rated voltage. For example, if you are using BIC 212, here VCV is 12 volts. Of course, you can use the voltage potential meter to adjust the output voltage, which is the set voltage we call it in this presentation. So, how does the power supply work and how the direction is changed? It simply depends on the set voltage and the battery voltage. Condition one, for example, when the 
battery voltage is lower than the unit set voltage. So of course, at this moment, the unit is working in the forward direction that taking energy from the AC side and transfer power to the DC side. So the battery could be charged to the target voltage, which is the set voltage we use. Reversely, if the DC voltage, which is the battery voltage we mentioned, is larger than the set voltage of BS unit, at this moment, the energy is transferred from DC to AC. So the battery is discharged to recycle the energy back. So this is a quick fun table. You can compare the condition and the conversion. So apart from the standard model, we have the optional CAN bus version. So in the CAN bus version, you can set the unit for C or D mode. So C mode means the charging mode versus D mode means the discharging mode. So please notice that the C D mode setting is only valid for the CAN bus version. So what does that mean? If you are using the campus model, you can set the unit in the charging mode or the discharge mode by sending a campus command. So the charge mode is compared with the definition we used in the previous slides is to control the unit to work in forward direction, which is from the energy conversion from AC to DC. So in contrast, when set in the discharging mode, you are controlling the unit to work in the reverse direction from DC to AC energy conversion. But when you are using the canvas, even you set it in charging mode and discharge mode, there are still some false condition, which is the abnormal standards. Let's have a look. For example, if you set the unit in the charging mode, as expected, you want for the charging operating. So the picture at the left side shows you how the battery voltage and battery current change in the normal standards. So at this moment, this is in the normal condition, also what we expect. So you set the V offset for the target charge voltage you want for your battery. So the V offset is just the canvas parameters that you can send through the canvas protocols. So V bat here means the battery voltage. However, if there is some mistake, for example, the customer take a wrong calculation or some other accident that the battery voltage is greater than the voltage that you set through the CAN bus. So at this moment, because this condition that the battery voltage is greater than the voltage that you set for the charging, the unit will be falsely working in the reverse direction. So at this moment, the battery is discharging, but because of this is the false condition that we don't expect. So at this moment, the unit will detect <coughs> and limit the discharging current only 5%. Okay, so this is the condition when set the unit in the charging mode through the canvas model. Similarly, we have another false condition when you set it in the discharging mode. So we expect when you set the, what, set the unit in the discharging mode, we expect for the discharging operation. However, if you set the discharging voltage greater than the battery voltage, so at this moment, the unit will detect 
and go to the false condition. So the unit will be falsely working in the charging condition, but only limit the charging curve at 5%. So please notice in the charge mode and discharge mode, the set voltage parameter is different. So in the discharge mode, you might need to use V offset reverse CAN bus command to set the discharge target voltage you want. Okay, so let's continue. LED indicator, you can simply see the unit indication from the LD. So when LD is green, that means the unit works normally in either normal operation or the discharge operation. But when the LED becomes red, that means the abnormal standards. For, uh, for example, the overload uh, might be happening. So let's have a quick look for a typical application. So in this slide, we'll show you the application of the battery test equipment. So when you want to make a battery cell test equipment, in the last section, we have mentioned that uh, the battery cell voltage is much lower than the battery pack that uh, we have. So in this condition, you can use the BIC unit, but you need to add an external bidirectional DC DC converter to further step down the voltage from BIC unit to the target voltage of the battery cell voltage. So at this moment, the BIC 2200 is working automatically detect based on the voltage from the DC DC converter. So the direction of forward direction or the reverse direction depends on the voltage from the DC DC converter. Instantly, you can use the BIC unit for the... Oui, bonjour, uh, Madame Noguera, Damien Smej, Société Avenue Tabacus. Uh, je suis en charge des, des solutions uh, techniques de la marque T Connectivity. Je reprenais un dossier un peu ancien uh, dans lequel vous apparaissez uh, en, tant que, uh, en tant que contact au niveau des achats. C'était pour des gaines thermaux de, de la marque T Connectivity. Uh, donc, ça remonte à quelques... Okay. So let's continue, sorry for excuse. So you can also use the BIC unit for the battery pack test. So the battery pack voltage is much higher than the battery cell. So at this moment, you don't need to use a bi-directional DC DC converter. You can just use a BIC unit. For example, if you choose a CAN bus model, you can control the forward direction or reverse direction by the canvas command. So this will save you the cost for, for the DCC converter. And you can just use one unit for the fast charge and discharge cycle test for the battery pack. So please notice that if you are doing the test for the withstand voltage or the isolation resist test, you must remove the screw A, which is located on the bottom of the unit. That you can see, you can also find this information in our nodes, in our stack. And additionally, the units also provide the anti-islanding protection. So what is anti-islanding? So the anti-islanding fault is detected when the AC side is connected to the power grid. So when the AC grid powers off or the outage. So in this condition, the BIC will detect and automatically shut down to protect the worker. Uh, for example, later the worker will repair the power grid. So this is to prevent the further damage. So for the system concern, we highly recommend you to add one safety approved circuit breaker connect at the AC side of the BIC unit. If you are doing the EMI test, 
to pass the EMI re requirement, you need to add an external EMI filter. So we also mentioned this in our spec that you can find the schematic and the parameters in our spec. So this is all the technical information I want to share. And finally, we will have a look at the demonstration video. But before the demonstration video, I want to give you more information of the setup in the demonstration video. So in the demonstration video, we are just using the standard model. So the, we have the AC means with the circuit breaker for the power grid. We use the standard model BIC, 48 watts. And we have the RSP 3000 and we have the DC load. So in the demonstration test, the set voltage for BIC unit is 48 watts. The set voltage for RSP 3000 is, is, is 50 watts. So the set voltage for the load is CV mode at 46 watts. So that means the battery voltage at 50 watts and the load at CV mode 46 means the battery voltage that we set for the 46 volts. So in the first step, you will see we turn on the AC for the power supply and we turn on the load to stimulate the battery. So in the first step, the RSP is off. So at this moment, because the battery voltage is lower than the BIC set voltage, the unit should work in forward direction from AC to DC. So the DC load should absorb the energy from the DC side. So in the second step, we turn off the load, but we turn on RSP unit. So at this moment, the RSP 3000 provides the power to stimulate at the battery with the battery voltage and 50 watts. So because the battery voltage now is larger than the set voltage for the unit. So at this moment, the unit should auto detect the load condition and automatically change the direction from DC side to AC side. So for the circle test, we turn off and on the DC load to stimulate the DC volt, the battery voltage change, switch from 50 to 46 and 46 to 50. And then we can see how the BIC unit is working and you, you can see the working direction is changed because of the existence of the DC load and the RSP. Okay, so finally, let's have a video. Then uh, we will take over for the Q&A sessions.
Great. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. So sh this video shows you that how does it work for our BIC, uh, depending on the load, and then uh, the BIC will uh, switch automatically between the power supply mode and the inverter mode. Yeah. So this is just give you the idea how does it work. Yeah? You, you to see is to believe. Okay. So also I thank you, the Dylan. I think uh, this is the end of our presentation today, a webinar today. And now we would like to go for the Q and A session, which is very interesting because I see a lot of the uh, things pop up, the questions you have on the text board. Okay. Okay. So you, uh, yeah. So you can see the the questions that you ask. I mean, this is the, maybe it does not 100% collect everything, but we try to have it as much as possible. So for the first question is, uh, well, can we provide the slides materials? Uh, yeah, uh, the answer at the moment is that it depends on the, the, dis the distribution right of the U. And then I think for Sebastian, no, you are the one, uh, well, sorry. So for, for, for if you, in case you are D1, then uh, you should have the email link of the materials. Yeah, but uh, uh, for this point, uh, we will get back to you because we know who asked the question and then we can resend you the link. Huh? For the sec sec uh, uh, second questions, that uh, the part is, uh, uh, yeah, for this one, to be honest, I don't have a good answer for you at the moment. If there's the thing we are adapters, for the, the HRPN series. I get it's not, but I am not 100% sure. So therefore I cannot give the right answer. But the, we will, what the, we were going to do is like, uh, we, uh, at the end of this uh, webinar, we will try to get the, the right answer for each of the questions you ask, and then we will send to you for the overall uh, uh, within a week or two. Okay, so the third question is that, uh, uh, how do you get PHP IP67? I think that maybe there's a misstating, mis uh, misunderstanding, and the PHP has no IP67 because uh, it is, uh, has an enclosure uh, casing, so it has a, a hose in, in a, this a metallic casing, so it cannot have the IP67. So uh, the next question is, uh, when does this uh, HOG100 uh, version will come? Uh, there's no plan at the moment. Uh, we only have the HEP that it has the certification with the IT approvals. So if you have any demands, uh, please let us know via the sales and then we can, uh, yeah, to check the possibility. I think from a HEP itself, uh, uh, it can have the lighting approvals, but uh, the, at the moment, at that time, we don't have it is because we don't know if the, in the lighting, we will really require such a 1000 watt for lighting application. And you know, all the safety approvals that cost money. So uh, this is why, one of the reasons that uh, we only have HEP 1000 at the moment. So the next question is, what's the IP level for HEP 1000 black type? Uh, this uh, information you can, if you can download the CB report uh, via the CIM with your account, and then you can download CB report, and this information is written in the CB report, and then I just, uh, yeah, uh, I check it, and I found it's IPX0 for the IP label for HEP 1000. 100 volt uh, type for what purpose, HEP 1000? Uh, it's a more, more it's a for the charging applications. One of them, yeah. I am not sure if I know all of the applications, but one of the applications for charging for such a high voltage. Uh, how, next question is how long for peak load 200% for the inverters? And this, for this information, you can find in the data sheets where we shows uh, for uh, like uh, here, 200% and for NTS 750, where it's 30 cycles, they can uh, output uh, with uh, 1500 watt. That means a two, 200 percent output. So that in this case, it's three, uh, 30 cycles. So I would suggest uh, to go to the uh, data sheets, and then you can find the detailed informations. Okay, I think this one. Uh, thank you, Rich, uh, Nicholas, and then uh, you already help. Uh, you all ask the same uh, questions, and then I think we already help, uh, uh, reply. And thank you, Uli, for trying to. Uh, reply to us. 
Uh, the next one is available to get the preliminary data sheet for the NTS uh, 3200. Yes, it is possible. Um, please uh, contact with us and then uh, we will try to get it for you. The next one is, is there a UK three pins plug option for the NTS and NTU. Yes, it is uh, as uh, optional models. Uh, you can find in the data sheets that the UK uh, is also here, but unfortunately it's for optional models. Yeah. Uh, next one. Yeah, so then next question is about the new inverter. So will you have a solar input and then can that be the connect to the AC grid directly? And are you planning to provide the uh, inverter monitor software for a new series same as the uh, old one? Uh, the, the first uh, question, I think uh, there's no uh, solar input. So you need to additional solar inverter uh, that back uh, change to the battery input. And the second one is uh, you, if you uh, select the NTU, NT, NTU models where it has UPS functions and then you can come, uh, it, it will, you it it can come to AC grid because that when you say in the UPS mode and then you will supply file. Supply, uh, the NTU will uh, try to use the AC mains to supply to the load directly. Uh, the, for the inverter monitoring software, and then this is the, for the relevant to the IRC series. So then that means that we have the, the N, 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 NTS NTU in the higher power range. I think uh, they are, can uh, work with the IRC series. That means it can be work together with these inverter monitoring software. So yes, it can be used as the previous one. Next one, uh, the good questions. When the inverter start to providing the AC and then uh, would the uh, AC body start always from zero, would it will be follow the AC mains uh, waveform? Uh, for these questions that I, to be honest, I don't have a good answer for you. So that at least I, I will need to check uh, internally to, to, to get back to you later with the uh, uh, with uh, all the all, all, all other questions uh, together, because personally I think it is starting from it's not chasing the AC mains, so so they, we could uh, start in from the zero port, but I, I'm not hundred percent sure, so that's why I didn't write anything here. Uh, does the next one is does the MPP carry the medical approvals? Uh, because uh, for applications, uh, a mega question it, it, it might require. Yeah, the standard versions has no uh, medical approvals. Um, and also, that I guess the, the price the, for medical charger will be more uh, different than uh, for ITE uh, or household uh, uh, things. So I guess the, uh, we even though we could have the medical approval for the, the charger, but the probably we, we will now sell with the same price because uh, we have to make the differentiations. So, but the, this one, uh, we will need to check in further. Whether first, whether is it possible to have a medical approval on MPP, and later on, uh, what's the price the strategies that we should set up? Uh, the next question is for NTS NTU series. It is possible to specify on data sheet more types of battery. For example, like uh, lithium acid. Uh, sorry, for example, like the lead acid, lithium iron or the lithium uh, iron uh, batteries. And then uh, I, you all, yeah, I often get questions if the, the inverters are compatible with the uh, lithium iron batteries. Uh, I think this is a very nice suggestions and then uh, we will have an internal discussion and then we'll get back to, 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 to that uh, with it. Because uh, uh, at the moment, for the data, our data sheet, we only mentioned about lithium, uh, lithium iron batteries, but we did not uh, really break into the details of what type of lithium battery it is supported. And then may, Carson may have the, 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 the question about, uh, yeah, about this. So I think this is a very nice question. And then we will have an internal discussion about that. Uh, yeah, the next one is uh, for NTU. How long is the break when the AC mains voltage fell until the battery what inverter take over. Yeah, this is also written in the data sheets is within 10 milliseconds, it will, uh, yeah, will take over the job. Uh, okay, the next one is, uh, how does the meanwhile handle the change of market and remove the CMAR corner for the medical power supplies? 
uh yes uh this i tried I, I was trying to write something but i think i i then i don't have time anymore then i have to come back get back to you to to host uh, the the webinar uh what i know but i will just uh, talk uh, orally what i know for medical power supply it is always not needed to have the c marks on that but because uh, all those or all, all most all, all, all most of the uh, medical power supplies manufacturer there we are doing this so therefore, there's no harm to have the C on that, although it's not really necessary. So it was not already not necessary to have a C mark on the medical power supplies. So I think uh, what we will do is we will follow up with uh, a new new uh, medical uh, uh, standards. I for, suddenly I forgot the, 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 the numbers in head, but uh, what I know is uh, it has been proposed uh, postponed from last year. It's supposed to be valid from last year, but uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it has been uh, postponed to this year, but it's uh, more, uh, more or less uh, a focus on the medical system and not power supply. So for medical power supply, we just can do what we were doing before. So we can continue to do the way we do it before. This is my understanding. Of course, uh, once we, uh, we will check further in due details, and then uh, you will get uh, more detailed replies uh, later on uh for for it okay so the next one is uh, is the 7.5 kilowatt is a uh, four wires i mean with a neutral and then uh, yeah you are expecting as a, a pure three phase oh R rst series is with a neutral wire that means that you have you have to connect to the this uh, neutral wires but uh, for shp series then it is the true three phase converters so then uh, please uh, wait, if you really need a two three phase, then wait for the SHP series. Mm, please provide the post uh, presentation information. Yeah, uh, the question is about uh, the post in presentation is not in the materials you have in hand. Uh, we will check, uh, uh, check the, in, we will have an internal discussion and then we will check if it's possible, then we will get back to you. The next one is the, do mean well planning return on the grid type? I guess it's a grid type, grid type inverters. Maybe later will be a new version of the uh, inverters uh, with a solar, solar with solar function. Uh, my 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 personal opinion is that for the household grid type inverter, the business model is a little bit complicated. Huh? Normally you. You need to uh, go through a different uh, project or tender base or something like that. So the, I think it's a different than what we are familiar with our distribution uh, business. Uh, plus, there's already a lot of uh, competitions. And but we will we don't we don't uh, close the door. We will keep monitoring. And uh, one well, it's not BIS but BIC. So in case the the BIC is successful, of course uh, we can continue. Uh, we can consider about all other possibilities. Okay, the next one is, uh, can uh, you explain the terms anti-island regarding to BIC? And uh, is there a standard yet for, for the, the, the big load shaping in the EV environment? So, yeah, so the, what the BIC do is, is chasing, is changing, is detecting the facts and magnitude of the grids. Uh, in case the grid is down for some reasons and then uh, BIC will be in an uh, island situation and that could be very dangerous for the equipment and people, yeah, because uh, it will still supply, uh, will give uh, the energy uh, to the AC part. So therefore, there's a standard, uh, I think this is in my slides, I don't remember the, 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 the numbers of the standard, but about the requirement, which, uh, which is uh, uh, to, to, uh, to which, uh, the, the inverter should be shut down within time two seconds yeah so to avoid that inverter still continue supplying the energy while the ac mains is down so yeah this is uh, i hope that is explained as well and for second one uh regarding to the standard for the uh yeah big low shaving for ev environment i personally do not know uh i don't have any good answers uh, but uh, we will need to check and uh, get back to you later the next one is the well BIC compatible with can open. Well, the the can ver version we have is a can point two point zero, 
And then it can open. What I know is quite different than a CAN 2.0. Uh, in case you have projects or any other uh, uh, suggestions or the requirements, uh, please contact us. Yeah, I know it's quite different huh? for the, between the CAN 2.0 and CAN, uh, can open. Mm. Well, uh, well, meanwhile, we re uh, release a, a bi-directional DC to DC converter in addition to the BIC. Yeah. Uh, what I know is not uh, because uh, check, first we will check a, a, the sales result of the BIC if it's good enough, and then uh, we uh, we could, could could think about it. I know our competitor like uh, TDK could have this D two D by directional converters. Yeah, but uh, what we do is the, we have this BIC that's a little different because we have ACC DC by directional. The next one does a BIC. Uh, 2000 at uh, 2200 meter IEEE 1547 standard for interconnecting distribution distributed resources with the electrical power. This part I also don't know. Uh, more, uh, so this one we have to check uh, for the details and then uh, we can get uh, back to you with the good answers. And the last one uh, for NMP module, we have difficulty finding the M3 assembly screws. Uh, thing real thing, standard flat head type have uh, are have too big head for the enclosure hole and uh, don't sit flat when mounted. It's possible you can provide the suitable screws for the, with the NMP modules. That's a very good question. I don't know that is the issues. Well, I didn't aware of this issue. Uh, what we can do, we will check and then uh, to see if, uh, if we, yeah, we will check and then uh, if it is approved, is it, if we found the same issues and then we will have an internal dis discussion and then we will provide a solution for that. Okay, great. I think uh, that's everything. Of course, I hope uh, I, I, may, I may not answer, uh, answer all of your question. Uh, I, I, yeah, uh, uh, sorry about that if I don't answer your question correctly or the, in the right, right way. But uh, yeah, I, uh, this is what I can do. And then uh, as, as I promised, we will uh, uh, do this. Uh, Q we will send you the uh, the overall Q and A so that you can uh, you you will get some more satisfied answer. Hopefully, yeah. In the end, yeah. And uh, I think this this is uh, this that's it. And then uh, I think we are also a little bit over time due to this uh, Q and A session is longer than I expected. But that's very nice. I thank you uh, for your uh, input and then uh, your feedback so that I know that uh, you really care about this and pay attention to it. Uh, yeah, I think this is the end. And then I would like to thank you once again for your patience and then uh, for the, I hope that uh, you get some information so that it will help you to, uh, to, to develop the being well business together with your company so that we have a win win situ uh, situation for everyone. Okay, so I would like to say bye from now and uh, hope you have a good day. And most important is uh, stay healthy, keep safe, all right? Thank you. Yes.